Hey guys, a very good day to you. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Daniel Rosell here bringing again another wacky video about a wacky technology, the M-Disc, one of the most fascinating uh, technologies I've stumbled upon thanks to the wonderful power of the internet. And actually, I think it was the Data Hoarder subreddit uh, where I first ran across mention of the M-Disc. So um, I was very excited. I was doing my errands today, picking up uh, posts and stuff like that. And I uh, went on to Stitcher, which is what I use to listen to podcasts. And I saw that the wonderful Restored All podcast by my digital buddies, uh, Curtis Preston, a.k.a. Mr. Backup, and uh, his wonderful uh, co-host, Prasanna Malayandi, who I uh, sometimes have good chats with over on Twitter. Um, I, thought that I saw that they got Barry Lunt, who I interviewed for this YouTube channel, onto the Restored All po podcast talking about the M-Disc. And uh, as I uh, said to Curtis and Prasanna on uh, Twitter, my day has just taken a turn for the better because any, any day where more people hear about the M-Disc is a good day, uh, in my opinion. So I um, have been doing a series of videos about this fascinating form of storage media, optical storage media, for the past couple of months. And what I thought I would do today in, in, in honor of this podcast in honor of just buying another spindle of M-Discs because I am committed to the M-Disc for the long run. I wanted to put together a little guide for anyone who's listened to uh, the two episodes on the uh, Restored All podcast and they're interested. Well, that sounds great. How do I start with M-Disc? Now, I've been um, doing M-Disc back, well, archiving actually for the past four months and I now use it for basically all the data that I care about. I keep a couple of backups of uh, websites and stuff like that on my um, NAS. My writing is already pretty well backed up. And the focus for me for the past year has been this YouTube channel. And uh, perhaps going forward, I might give my podcast a bit more effort. But all that stuff, the data I care about now, it's all going on to MDisk. I'm 100% bought into it. And uh, I'm here today to share some of, uh, some of, the, how, so, some of the nuts and bolts with anyone else interested in joining the quiet, the quiet, peaceful M-Disc revolution. All right, guys, so here's a little um, little uh, uh, Google deck I put together here, and I call it the optical approach, a, a quick guide to getting started backing up your data onto M-Disc. All right, let's go. Now, the first thing you wanna know if um, you're thinking about using M-Disc is you wanna be clear on um, what it is, what it does, what it's not suitable for, so it's for archival and folks tend to use backup and archive interchangeably. They're not the same thing. Let's say you have a computer system that's updating constantly like your desktop computer and you want to have a copy so that if it goes kaput overnight, you're going to be able to restore. That's a backup use case and MDisk would absolutely not be suitable for that. The reason is that MDisk is what's called worm media. Uh, which stands for write once, uh, I think read many, yeah, that would make sense. R write, write the thing once, you can read it many times, right? You can only write the thing once, you get one shot at burning the disk, but you can read it as many times as you want. So because um, MDisk is Worm Media, it's not really a good choice for backup, but for archive, it's perfect. Think about my YouTube videos, right? Just are you, are you YouTube videos? If you have a YouTube channel, I put my videos up on YouTube, I don't think I'm ever going to need the original files. I don't think, I hope YouTube will never, you know, get my channel off the internet. But because YouTube is a third party, I don't want to have my only copy of these videos I put time and effort to in YouTube hands, in YouTube's hands, right? So I want to keep my own copies. So that's what I'm using MDisk for. I'm keeping two copies of every video and we'll get to the on-site, off-site thing in a little bit. So I think the second caveat or the second thing it's not good for would be uh, people who need big data. So optical media, the traditional problem of optical, I'm just going to jump out of my screen for a sec, is that it's not good for high capacity data requirements, right? The biggest MDisc, MDisc currently comes in three flavors in, uh, in its, there's two variants, there's DVD MDisc and Blu-ray MDisc. And within the Blu-ray category, you've got 2550 and 100 gigabyte MDiscs. Now, if you're a Dell or an IBM or even a national bank generate, generating terabytes of data a day, that even if, you, even if you do need that to be archived as opposed to stored in some backup repository, 
MDisc just doesn't have the capacity. It's going to be infuriating. On the other hand, if you are a wedding photographer or a little videographer like me, and you're generating maybe 20 gigs a month, MDisc is just fine, right? So it really, really varies. It's, it's not something I don't think you'd see many businesses using. Although, if you're backing up something pretty light like office documents, you can still cram a lot of them into 25 gigs or 100 gigs. So bad use cases, I would say enterprises or backup rather than archive. Again, because the MDisc is worm media and you can only write the thing once, you can't do incremental or differential backups in which you, know, you only write the files that have changed. So it wouldn't be really suitable for your backup use case. Who is MDisc a great uh, fit for on the other hand? I, I would suggest videographers, photographers, if you don't want to use a cloud, you're a, you're, a, you're a videographer. It's not my reason for not using the cloud. Although I think it's a pretty decent one. You want to actually physically have access to your offsite backup. And that is a key principle of backup, the three, two, one rule. You want to have your two offsite copies and not just one lest your house be broken into or uh, be burned, God forbid, or something else untoward happen to your onsite backup. That's why you want two. People who don't want to go to the bother of maintaining bulky hardware like NASs in their house and just about anyone really who needs a very robust long-term solution for storing data and cares about data permanency. And that's really what MDisk is uh, offering as unique value. That that um, that claim, some would say it, it is um, disputable. Others would say, I'm just going to buy into it that it can last for 1,000 years. Um Sorry for these changes to my screen size. I'm going to just keep myself very small um, as I go through the slide here. Now, here's what you actually need to do. So let's, let's say you're going for it. You're a videographer, you're a YouTuber, and you say, hey, this is a brilliant little technology for my needs. And I would say if it suits you, it really, really is, is a great technology. Here's what you're going to need, okay? And it's not a big list. And by the way, compared to some other forms of uh, storing media for archival purposes like LTO, MDisk is really cheap. You don't need LTO, for instance, you need an expensive LTO drive, and then the cassettes might be cheaper, but it's like, you know, a couple of thousand bucks for the drive. You can get a MDisk uh, reader writer for about a hundred bucks on Amazon. So that's what you're gonna need. You're gonna need a MDisk burner, and uh, I do my fingers because burner actually isn't correct when we're talking about MDisc, it's actually an engraving process. So let's just stick to reader writer. You're gonna want one MDisc drive. They come in two variants. You have internal MDisc drives, ones that'll plug into a desktop computer, and you have plenty of external um, MDisc capable drives on the market. They do need to be MDisc capable. You can't just buy a Blu-ray drive off the shelf and hope it'll write MDisc, but the good news is there are such things on the market. Um, the technology is still in use. I'm not quite sure who's keeping MDisc afloat, but clearly uh, there are companies still producing it, so someone must be buying. So um, one spindle of MDiscs, right? $50 on Amazon if you want to buy a 25 pack. If you want to go cheap, you can probably buy them for less for like a five pack. Um, storing, you know, and these are just tiny items here, something to store your finish. So you want to put your DVDs in something like a case. I keep mine in a little box and, uh, you know, those individual jewel cases, 20 bucks perhaps. Now, and then you want two copies and this is important, right? Why two copies? Again, all good backup approaches, even even good archive approaches, as we're talking archive, not backup here, require two places to store your data, one offsite, one onsite. So you're not gonna be burning one MDisc every time you have data to archive, you're ideally burning two copies. So you fill up your 25 gigabytes on your computer, you, you wanna archive it, you want to burn that data two times, not just once. And one is going to be stored in your house. The other, you can be a bit imaginative. If you have a place, it's just to get it to a different location. If you have, uh, you know, some storage in your office or you're, you're lucky enough to own two homes so you can keep one in each home. Uh, you could post disks periodically out to your relative and say, I'm going to send you an MDisk in the post or by DHL once every few months and please put it up in the uh, in this box. Uh, you could find a friend who's also into backup and do a little backup exchange with him. You send him your discs, he sends you your discs, etc. Kind of like a um, Synology has something like that, you know, a technical version of that where it actually goes over the internet through a program. You could just literally meet your friend in a bar 
restaurant or uh, just use the postal service. Now, the good news is that because MDisk is still kind of obscure, you don't have a ton of choice regarding your options. Uh, so just plug in. This is all these. These are all these screenshots are. I bought this one, the LG Electronics thing. Um, no, I didn't. It's too cheap. Sorry, that's a DVD. So you want to make sure. Type in MDisk Blu-ray. This one is a Blu-ray uh, capable um, internal drive, and you'll get a. They'll give you an MDisk as well, which is cool. Uh, this one is only DVD, so don't buy that. <laughs> Bad example. Sorry. So just buy, and it's about seventy-five dollars for an external drive, and uh, I use Linux, and it works just fine. If it works just fine on Linux. It probably works on any operating system that you might have. Um, just remember, and as I said earlier, you want the Blu-ray M discs and you don't want the DVD ones. The reason I say that is because Blu-rays hold more data. So you'll still find um, M disc DVD burners on the market and M disc DVDs, but I'm not sure why anyone would want them because they store only a fraction of the data of the Blu-ray versions. Now. It, I, I don't say this disparagingly, you can save a bit of cash because it's really, you know, money money is money and all that. It's $10 cheaper on Amazon to buy the inkjet printable ones for the same spindle and the exact same discs, um, 25 of 25 gigs. If you don't trust me, look it up yourself. But to, uh, to, for, from what I could see, it was the exact same product. The only difference being that this one has M disc on each disc and this one are blank intended for inkjet printers you can still just get a sharpie and write so i, I i'm i'm buying these now uh because i'm i've been investing quite heavily in this m disc thing and 10 discs so you'll figure out the per disc price is a little bit more expensive than blu-ray but you're getting um this special long-term storage for that money final thing you're going to need on the software level you're going to need some burning software that can write to the thing um, in this particular case, I don't think you need something that says it's specifically MDisc capable. Um, and I say that because it's the unique properties of the MDisc. It's the composition of the disc and it's the type of laser needed to write to that disc. I think on the software level, there aren't any differences in terms of the protocol. So for that reason, I don't think it matters what i don't think i think any blu-ray burning software will write to mdisc but i can't be i can't say that for sure all i can say is on ubuntu i've written mdisc successfully using k3b on windows you have burnaware and i'm sure if you google just google you know mdisc's burner for uh mac whatever so here's my workflow just to explain it right just so you can this is literally just screenshots from my nas totally uh total total transparency here Right, so I have an NES in my home and I have a video backup folder. And as I finish these YouTube videos, I put the I put the MP4s there off my computer. Then I wait, then I wait, I'll oh, skip a step. I've gone ahead, sorry. So then I wait for this to fill up to about 23 gigabytes. That usually takes me the best part of a month. Then I add a bit of, you should, I haven't done this, sorry. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want to say porky pies in this video. I haven't gone to the extra step of adding parity data to fill up the remaining things. But if you know more about burning software, you can add a bit of parity data to, to fill it up. So I just put 23, when I have 23 gigs or thereabouts, I write my two copies onto my M disk. Okay. Then I delete them on the NES when they're done. Right, and you don't even need the NES. You could just store it on your computer. And then when you've got 25 gigs filled, you put them on. I just have an NES. So I figured I may as well save the space on my computer. And I then bought a few little accessories from Amazon. I bought some jewel cases. Hadn't seen those in many years since the CD era ended. I bought a little box for about 10 bucks. I have a label printer. I stuck some labels on. And that's really it. There's nothing else to... Nothing else to see, and I put them in the box. But that is actually about three years worth of YouTube output, believe it or not, in that case there. And, um, you know, buy yourself some Sharpies. They do make special Sharpies that are supposed to be DVD safe. I'm not sure if it's a real thing, but uh, you may as well be safe. So Google put it, put, put CV, DVD safe marker into the search bar on Amazon and buy yourself a few boxes to have ready. And then I just have a little spreadsheet so you can see that I've written here A007. So I, I went over to this kind of archiving system and I just have a little spreadsheet and I say A007 is 
YouTube videos from August 1. And then maybe if I need a second disc, I'll do A008 and it's the second run of YouTube videos from August, so on and so forth. Oh, and then here's my here's my big secret, the offsite library. So as I said, you need to offsite it. So this is actually my offsite box. It's currently sitting in the USA at an undisclosed location. Top secret stuff here, guys. Uh, you can see I've uh, same box. I bought two of them. I I literally flew out with my M discs on an on, a, on an aircraft. My M discs came with me on an international voyage, and this is what just for anyone curious, they actually look like from the back. They're kind of a uh, dark uh, brown, I guess you could say. Now, just a few things uh, to wrap to kind of round this video out with information wise. Um, firstly, they do look the same. It's the same form factor as a, CV, a CD or a DVD, but they do store that data differently using an inorganic layer. And that's why, as I mentioned a few times, you need M-Disk M -disk drives specifically to drive them. And because it's kind of a wacky process, you're literally burning, well, you're sorry, you're pitting away at an inorganic layer with stronger lasers than you will find in Blu-rays. That means it's slow, not surprisingly. Um, I don't get the full speed rated on my M disk burner or the disk for that matter. I get like one times. So it takes about an hour and given that I burn each time twice, it's two hours a month and I don't even need to like monitor the process. I just, you know, see my NAS is up to 23 gigs. I download that. I say burn two copies. I put it in an M disk. I put it at home and then I post one out. It, it's pretty, it's about probably 30 minutes of active work per month at this point for me. And I don't think it's bad. Yes, it is more pricey than Blu-rays and DVDs. Um, and if you're just looking at it at a data cost perspective, you're going to find that HDD, aka hard drive uh, and cloud storage is cheaper. But nothing wrong with cloud storage, is assuming it's stored on RAID. But for um, for HDD, bad, bad medium for long-term archival storage because of uh, bit rot and the always extant potential of catastrophic failure there's other there's been other youtube videos by fellow data mavericks and they say i know we know it sounds wacky and we 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 know you're thinking and like optical media is dead no one uses that anymore it's still considered the best long-term archival media bar none really i i i know it's shocking uh, some other things say some people are skeptical on Reddit, particularly you'll find people on the data hoarder subreddit saying, oh, we don't know. Is it really true? Anyone can make these claims. It's data protected. You got to make your own mind up sometimes in life. And, um, I, I have faith in the tech. I, I that's, that's all, that's all I'm going to say. I'm not going to get into the, the arguments because I don't think anyone can prove without showing, without revealing trade secrets, no one can prove or disprove fundamentally the claim of the 1000 year thing. I'm, I'm gonna do, if, if I'm still making YouTube videos in 10 years, I'm still kicking for that matter, I will do, here's my M disk 10 years later to satisfy some skeptics. But you know, just, I, just, just to point that out. Some people worry, this is a more, I think, poignant concern. Some folks worry it's going to be deprecated overnight. So like you're gonna wake up and there's gonna be no M disk burners on the market or no M disks. Here's my point. I actually don't think that's a bad point. It's probably going to happen at some point in the future, but I don't think there's any real, any substantial risk that, that that's going to catch you completely off guard because we're talking here about backward compatibility. So when backward compatibility doesn't support MDisk, doesn't support the burners, there's no burners left on the market that are compatible with modern computers, then you have a problem or no, sorry, then you're then you will have a problem if you don't do anything. And at that point, maybe it's 50 years from now, potentially, you know, take that MDisk library and put it on the next thing. But this isn't actually a criticism of MDisk. This is something fundamentally inherent in computing in general. Computing, computing and digital data storage just isn't that old. And what's cutting edge today is going to be where MDisk is today in 20, 30 years time. And the same thing's gonna apply. So it's not really, a criticism of a fair criticism of M disk, I believe. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm I'm driving myself crazy trying to find the exact right position for this uh for this new microphone stand. Um. Anyway, guys, I hope that was uh somewhat cogent and clear. I do really think it's an amazing tech. I do really think that um it's something unique. It's the only 
storage medium that I'm aware of today that the, the that its engineers have actually put some thought into permanency, right? We're living in the era of immediacy. We can access cloud data at the finger at the at the touch of a keyboard. But in this uh, mad rush for stuff that works now, we've we've kind of lost sight of data resiliency as an objective. And when I had that conversation with Barry Lunt, I felt like it was we, we had it was, we had a bit of a trouble with that interview because the connection was bad. But when I watched the interview back on my own YouTube channel, I realized we were it was like a meeting of the minds because Barry was saying his concern is I don't want to trust my data, my life's work, let's say to AWS or Microsoft. They don't have a vested interest in keeping your data safe. If you if you uh, die, God forbid, whoever you are watching this YouTube video tomorrow, how do, how do you know that data is going to stay? So I, when, when Barry shared very openly that, you know, his motivation was kind of stuff related to almost death, I would say, or mortality of, you know, we just want to have our data secure for the next generation. I was like, that is exactly why I got so excited when I found out that MDisk existed because that's where I'm coming from too. I love Google Drive. I love cloud computing. But when it comes to the data, like whether it's a podcast or writing or paintings or any anything that you're putting that's the imprint of your life, that I want to have my own control over. I want to in a, in a, in a location physically I can access or someone can access on my behalf in the event that I'm no longer on this planet. So when he said that, I was like, ah, Barry, you and I, I get you. I get this project. And that was when I decided I am going all in on MDisk. I'm going to buy MDisk, keep buying them, keep backing up with them until I can't do that any longer. And then I'll look to the next approach and I'll keep you guys updated because I do think this is a special technology and probably vastly underappreciated. In fact, I would recommend... I recommended it to all my friends who are into photography and they're like, I'm saying this is a great tech. You know, if you have an offsite backup location, you have somewhere safe on site. Uh, this is great. Yeah, I, I think it's totally a viable replacement for cloud, for archiving, not for backup. Remember, we have to be very clear, not for your production data, day to day data pool, not for your backup pool. We're talking here specifically about long term cold archival storage very 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 important to be clear on that difference anyway um, i hope this video has been useful if you're also getting into the m discs or we just heard about them through prasanna and uh and wc preston mr backup thank you guys for watching if you'd like to get more videos from me on different uh, tech subjects and uh, potentially more m disc videos in the future do uh drop a subscribe and a like it helps this channel reach more people and of course thank you guys very much for watching this video